Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Pity Beats here from Pop Turnus, being to Dempsey Brick about Willow on Disney Plus. Welcome back to the show, man. It's so good to see you. Thanks, man. I'm glad to be back. And not in a bathtub this time. <laughs> no, but you know what? That's like a kind of iconic inside joke for Pop Turnus now. That's like a that's a thing. It's awesome. You know what I mean? I want to see if I can get in a bathtub at the end of this interview. I mean, it's right there, so I will take this. <laughs> there was a lot of people talking about. He was in a bathtub, and hey, that's also Wyatt from Heartland. Those were the two comments we were getting the whole time, which is cool. Here's the thing with this, man. First off, congratulations. I know you've been waiting a long time for people to finally see Willow on Disney+. Plus. You know, you were cast for this a while ago. It's finally out. When did it start to kind of hit you that people were going to be able to see it? Like, was it even like a month before doing the press and everything? Like, it's crazy, right? Yeah, it is really crazy. I mean, it, it kind of still hasn't. I think it was like the whole thing was like a fever dream. Like I was cast in 2020 at the, at the end of 2020 and it's just been so long. And then a week ago we had the premiere here in LA and I've never been to anything like that, anything of that scale. And it was just like, like even that, if, if, if there was ever a moment that it was going to hit me, it was going to be that. And even that was just so far outside of the realm of what I'm used to that it was, it's, it, it hasn't hit me. It's so crazy. And I feel like, and I'm wondering if, you know, you talked about this with your cast as well. I feel like the whole cast for Willow and Disney Plus is in kind of one of these unique situations because there's familiar territory and unfamiliar territory at the same time, right? Where people know enough about the world, like they know Willow, they know the the original movie and everything. But now... There's new characters, there's new quests, there's new journeys and everything, so they don't know what's to expect on Disney+. Plus. Do you think about those things at all? I find that interesting from a viewer perspective. For sure. I mean, I think that that was very much the intention of the creative team was to do two things. One was to honor the original because it's so rare and it's a really rare opportunity and responsibility to be a part of a project that people have come to love for, for an IP that you really had nothing to do with. Um, but then at the same time, we are coming to this... Uh, you know, and we're trying to carve it out in a contemporary way. So we're very much, I think, trying to do both those things. And I think that was clear from the writing of it. That, that was yeah. what we were doing. I think the original Willow, it really pushed the envelope for the time that it was made, which was 1988 was when it was released. Yes. So they're, they're trying to do that. And, and I, I think, you know, the writers and creative team and, and hopefully all of us has succeeded in doing that again now. So I think it was very much that balance of being, okay, we're, we're existing in a world that people have come to love and to know um, but we're doing something unique and new. And so you're trying to appeal both to the audience, like you said, who have seen it, but then also people who have like never seen the original movie and are, are coming to it fresh. It's like a tag team, absolutely, which is pretty, pretty cool. Do you find it interesting? I mean, besides the fantasy element, because I feel like that's the obvious one, there's a lot of like things to love about this show. What was uh, something else that kind of stood out to you when you were reading the script for this besides the fantasy? Because like, it's it's there. Like the fantasy is right there. Like you can't escape it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean. I think that the thing for me that stood out was the comedy. Yeah. And I think that especially within the realm of fantasy, that's sort of a unique thing to be kind of self aware and comedic. Um, I think they took. Uh, I think John Kasdan, who's the showrunner, took a lot of cues from his own comedic sensibilities and also movies from the '80s. Yeah. Uh, John Hughes movies that are very uh, intentionally comedic and self aware, and so that's something. Um, unique in the fantasy realm that I haven't seen too much of mm -hmm. uh, that Willow does really well. It's really funny. That's that's probably the thing that I'm most excited about. It's just that it really stands alone, f I think, for comedy fans. I mean, at least I think this. Obviously, I'm biased, but I, I really do think <laughs> that it's <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, Okay, I'm, it's, I'm not biased. I agree. How about that? Is that good? <laughs> I, well, I appreciate that. And there's definitely, there's definitely parts of it that I'm, you know, that I, the first time that I was reading it, for example, that that was just like, it, it was it was a page turner in a way, it, it, which is something that I've come to really love and appreciate in the fantasy genre because yeah. of uh, books and movies like Harry Potter that I grew up on. And then feeling something like that where you're like, you're, you're just so, sort of on the edge of your seat. You want to see what happens. I was feeling like that reading it. It's interesting you mentioned the edge of your seat because that was my next question. What's it like as an actor 
being on projects like Willow where you need like, cause like what interests me is there's like two different audience members these days, right? There's like the active member and the passive member. The passive member can go home, pop on the office, be on their phone, eat some pizza. Right. But then you need like the active viewer that's like dialed in, right? Like who's like paying attention to everything. And I feel like this is one of those shows, Willow on Disney plus where like you have to pay attention or you're going to miss something. What do you think about that from an acting perspective? perspective working on shows where you know that like the audience like has to be paying attention and basically strapped in for a ride so to speak i'm curious about that well it's not something that i was like uh, acutely cognizant of when we were shooting it i wasn't really but yeah. the thing that i was cognizant of was the fact i think what might be a takeaway if you know that that's the type of show you're doing is to really be putting 100 effort into making sure that everything's clear yes but i think we sort of did that just by virtue of walking onto a project where like I said, the creative team like John Kasdan, but then also Warwick uh, Davis uh, are so passionate about it. Your leaders are really, really passionate. So you're walking onto a set where that's the um, that's the expectation. So I think that it may have just been fortuitous that this is one of those types of shows where people have to tune in, dial in, um, where everyone's bringing their A game anyway. I mean, you would really on any project, but especially when you're walking in with like, you have like legendary leaders like yeah. they, they're really dialed in. That's just how everybody on the creative team or down the line, cast, crew, everybody felt that exact same way. It very much was a labor of love. Yeah. When did that first like teaser thing where Warwick is introducing the cast come out? Was that last year? Remember there was like that video yeah. where you were, and like you were cast and it shows and you had like the long hair and they were like, what's your name? You're like Dempsey. That, I feel like that came out last year, right? I think that came out when we were, it must have 2021, but that it's funny because that specific thing was one of the moments that actually that being on the show hit me where it really felt like the whole thing felt like a dream come true for a variety of reasons. And that was one of the moments where it felt really apparent because yeah. Warwick basically fell into a character there where he's playing this comedic hyperbole um, of himself that he had done already on like uh, uh, Life's Too Short and yeah. stuff like that. Those are that show specifically was one that I loved when I was younger. So to see him in front of you doing that and then making fun of you it, on one hand it's a dream come true and on the other it's terrifying because you're like i don't want to mess this up it's so funny and he's ripping into my name i think he was just like that's just a and terrible at the story. time that was like the only like willow disney plus thing yeah. like on the internet right if you yeah. think about yeah. it like there was yeah, like no it was <laughs> yeah 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 so good um your dad acts your brother acts you have a sister also who acts right yeah. So you're all, years. yeah, you're all acting and doing that. I know you're all in different kind of places here and there. Some of you are in LA, some of you are other places, but when you get together, are those conversations intense about like, I want to make things and like, what are you doing? Like, what are those conversations like when you're like together? Is it always kind of like churning ideas and stuff? <laughs> Uh, whenever with the whole families together is consistently making fun of each other. So they will never, <laughs> and I think there's a real benefit to that. Cause you know, I was on, on set and it was kind of like, you know, there was like a real scale to being on, on Willow and, and you know, it, you're, you're, you're flying all over the world and you're shooting. And, and I was like, I was very conscious at the end of it to be like, okay, I need to do something just to make sure that I'm grounded. And I was like, what is that going to be? And I got home and instantly torn apart you know, in a loving way. Yeah. But I was like, oh, I never need to worry about being grounded. I'll just like hang out with my family. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also, my dad, like it, my dad is one of the best actors in, in Canada. I, I'm pretty, pretty, I mean, that's how I feel. And I, I think that- uh, Legend, you know, absolutely. I, Canadian legend, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's incredible. And- Called he, you out about the bathroom on Pop Turnip though. He says, hey, I'm on your show out of a brick that's <laughs> never brick in the wall, not in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah i mean he's he's um he's just like really that was one of the things i was really grateful for uh mm -hmm. growing up with him was two things i mean he's just he's one of the most passionate people uh, actors i've ever met he he loves it it's just the most important thing in the world to him and also for just to be able to hear him talk about acting he's genuinely passionate about it so if we're ever talking about i mean we're always talking about movies we're always talking about acting yeah um and, and then making fun of each other. And so your brother, of, too, is just crushing it. I mean, your brother has kind of one of those, yeah, Billy's just like, he has so many things that are like, 
in the pipe, so to speak, right? There's like announcements that like spur here and there. Like it's pretty crazy, right? I feel like it's all like, it's like a balloon now for Billy that everything's going to come out. It's like, you know what I mean? That's, that's what's crazy. And that's, it's really beautiful. I mean, he deserves it more than anybody I can even think of. He's honest, genuinely one of the most talented people. And he, like he's doing this A24 movie um, that it, the trailer um, actually released on the same day that there was a Willow premiere and we were all together. My, my parents flew over my mom's first first class that's a huge life. day for the bricks that, it was that's... like a really fun day and that was a week ago so it was just it was you know i'm just really really proud of billy and ella and really the whole family i i mean it's um I, it's really well deserved for billy and uh uh w- when you finish saving the world that's what the movie's called and then yeah. he's editing his movie now with finn uh wolf that they it's, direct yeah it's like it's non-stop like it literally is non-stop and you know I've, i was telling you before you know I've on I've been on the creative side a little bit lately too with writing some shorts and stuff and like it really is like the people you're working with the like creatives just they don't stop basically they always have something happening basically yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah which is crazy um last week I actually interviewed your director for the silence John R Leonetti which was really really awesome yeah, so awesome. I getting back to the whole horror thing as well. Obviously, Dempsey Brick goes where the opportunities are. You love storytelling and everything. It's really cool to be able to work in all these different genres, right? Like work in horror, work in fantasy, work in drama. Like you were wide at Heartland. Like did, that is that something you plan for at all, or like I don't even think you could plan for that. I feel like it just happens, right? Well, no, especially at the beginning of your career. Kind of, like you said, you're going where the opportunity is going, and then it's then you and then it's at a certain point where I, I think it's always good to be conscious of what types of movies you want to make. Mm. Uh, and, and then just sort of either make your own like you're doing or or just go where those are, like audition for those types of projects or meet those people. Yep. But yeah, I, I suppose you're right. I suppose it's been a lot of different genres. Uh, yeah. In a world where there's like a lot of genre betting happening, like there are some people that are like not conscious of the genre at all these days, right? Like you look at a lot of the projects out there. What do you think as a storyteller about the genre bending happening where people are just throwing in elements, seeing what fits, even though maybe it doesn't seem like it would fit. You know what I mean? Like hot comedy horror, that always is one that like the the horror, the dark comedies just are crazy because the writing of it is so good that you don't know what you're watching sometimes. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's dark comedy might be my favorite yeah. genre. I love it. It's, Martin McDonough films. Um, I, I, well, I love him. I love, if I'm going to choose a genre, I know this is not the question, but I think it, it is writer directors. Like those are two directors are just my favorite. Yep. In fact, you know, I was just watching Casino recently and uh, it's really funny. Like that is one of the best examples of a dark comedy, I think, because it's very, the, the humor is very subtle. Yeah. You don't even think about it being a funny movie. Like you don't think of like being funny when you watch Casino. Like that's not the first yeah. thing that comes to mind. <laughs> Yeah, or Reservoir Dodge or something. Like that's, if, if I was going to act in a movie, I think it would be, if I would want to be in something kind of like that or maybe like a PTA movie or something where it's just so phenomenally put, or a Coen Brothers movie. It's the writer-directors. Um, But, you know, you talk about genre bending and I think that was, uh, Willow is a good example of incorporating yeah. a lot of different uh, genres. And that was the thing going on. Like at the outset, John basically gave us all these different references and movies to watch. And a lot of it was horror. A lot of it obviously was fantasy and then a lot of it was comedy. And that's something that I think I think will be really interesting and is hopefully really interesting for fantasy fans because you're seeing sort of recognizable tropes and different archetypes from different genres, but through the lens of fantasy. And I think it sort of brings kind of like a, like obviously there's there's tons of fantasy these days and a lot is is in the sort of beloved tradition in the, yeah. in the recognizable vein. But I think it'll also be nice for fantasy fans to see something they haven't yet seen in that yeah. realm. I just love the fact that watching you know shows like willow on disney plus is like a journey for the audience member now like it's a full out like experience right like tv has just been elevated where like you're just kind of like you're strapped in almost like you're going on a roller coaster right that's like the best part about tv well it is like it it really does feel cinematic i mean i think tv one of the also the benefits of tv is you have so much more time than you would in in a film yep um, and you can really explore different characters and and uh, make everyone three dimensional. And I think to me that's maybe outside of the comedy the most exciting thing about Willow is that John Kasdan, who's the showrunner, really created interesting, ambiguous characters. Yes. And I think, like you're saying, with with uh, with with um, in TV where now it feels cinematic, yeah. And there's the effort given to that, but then also now you have the time to really explore. I feel like everybody's sort of taking something away. 
like I think audience members will have the opportunity to take something away from every character yep. in a way that you know in a movie you might not be exposed to as many um like ensemble characters as deeply oh absolutely I love film though I'm not trying to you know yeah no, <laughs> no it's, it's it's so true no and you know uh it just recently premiered on Disney Plus, which is unreal. And uh, I wanted to thank you so much for coming back on the show, man. It was so great catching up with you, dude. Yeah, likewise. I'm really glad. I didn't get in the bath. I'm going to get in the bath. No, I no, no. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> no, I do. I feel like I'll be okay, so disappointed with for, myself. Okay, just for context for people that are like, what is happening? Okay. I'm yeah. But, but, okay. But that had to do with the fact that it was during the pandemic and there was everyone that was home where you were. So you were trying to find a quiet spot. Like there was yeah. context there. It was a pandemic there conversation. Was, and that was my first interview, I think. So that's, this is a really cool full circle moment. That I'm really and glad I think I was fun. Billy's, one of Billy's first interviews too, which I think was pretty cool too. That, that tracks, you probably are. You actually connected us. You were like, hey, he wants to do some interviews. And like, you were the one that connected us for that. So oh, cool. no, it's awesome. No, dude, so good chatting with you. Your Instagram account is just your name, right? Dempsey Brick? Yeah, just Dempsey Brick. B-R-Y-K. And, yeah, and Willow on Disney Plus, they can check out. Well, this has been Pop Turn at youtube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Till next time, this is Dempsey Brick and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.